hi guys you're welcome back to my youtube channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how you can create a google scholar account so guys it's very easy to do if you want to know how to do it just make sure you follow me to the end of this video and also if you're new to our youtube channel don't forget to like subscribe and leave a comment as that will tremendously help grow our youtube channel so guys without any further ado let's get started so guys like i said i'm going to be showing you guys how you can create a google scholar account but not just that i'm going to be showing you guys how you can actually publish your article so if you have any publication i'm going to be showing you guys how you can actually upload it here in google scholar so guys now if you want to open a google scholar account the first step you have to take now is to go over to your browser whichever browser that you're using will work out fine but in this tutorial i'm going to be using the chrome browser just tap on your browser so let me tap on my chrome browser right away so guys once your browser opens up what you have to search for is scholar.google.com or you can just simply search for google scholar so guys let me search for google scholar so i have to tap on that search bar there let me tap on it and i have to type in google scholar let me type in google scholar google scholar so guys can see there is there so what you have to do now is to tap on enter so let me tap on enter so guys now you can see the results of my search you can see there are so many of them but the one you have to tap on is on the first one which is written scholar.google.com you can see there the arrow is pointing at it that's the one you need to tap on so guys let me tap on it right away so guys now you can see this is the home page of the google scholar website so guys now the next step that you have to take now towards creating a google scholar account is to tap on the three horizontal bar at the top left corner you can see there the arrow is pointing at it so let me tap on it so guys now the next step you need to take now is to tap on the first option there which is written my profile you can see there the arrow is pointing at it so let me tap on it so guys now you can see this way you need to add your details you can see the first one there name full name as it appears on your articles so guys now let me add my name so guys now you can see the next step now which is affiliation example professor of physics Princeton University. So guys, let me add an affiliation right now. Let me add um, graduate assistant of human anatomy, University of Portacourt. Let me just add it. Um, so guys, now you can see I've added an affiliation. That's an example. And let's go over to the next one, which is email verification. You can see example, Einstein at Princeton.edu. So guys, now you can see. So what I have to do now is to add my email. So let me type it in now. Um, let me add an email. So guys now you can see i've added an email right there so guys now the next step now is to add areas of interest you can see example general relativity unified field theory so guys let me add my area of interest let me add neuroscience and anthropometry so let me add this right away neuroscience so let me put comma and anthropometry So guys now you can see i've added my areas of interest let's go back to the next step which is home page you can see you can add your website but that's actually optional so i'm going to be leaving that place blank i'm going to be leaving that space blank so guys there's something important i need to tell you concerning the email verification you can see right there in the email i imputed it contains the a2 you can see it, it contains dot a2 which is usually for education you can see it contains dot a2 so if your email does not have that dot a2 you're not going to go over to the next step it's actually important that your email has that Edu. You can see the example that they gave us Einstein.Princeton.edu. So that edu is actually important. So guys, let me show you guys an example. Let me remove that email and put a Gmail. Let me remove this email I imputed here now and replace it with gmail.com to show you guys what it's going to show me. Let me impute it now. So guys, now you can see I've changed my email now to gmail.com. Let me tap on next to see if I'm going to go over to the next step. So let me tap on it right away. So guys now you can see the error message that popped out let me read it out loud please use an email address at your institution for example your name at meet.edu or leave this blank so guys now you can see what i said it's either you're using the .edu or you can leave it blank but if you use gmail.com it's not going to work so guys that's what i needed to clarify before i move forward so guys let me change this gmail.com now to .edu let me change it back to .edu let me use uniport dot edu so guys now you can see i've changed it to dot edu so let me tap on next now to see it's going to take me to the next step so let me tap on it wow guys can now see we are over to the next step 
So guys, now you need to choose the articles that you've actually published or the publications you've actually made. This is where you need to select them for you to go over to the next step. Without selecting any publication, you will not go over to the next step. Without selecting any article that you've made, you will not go over to the next step. So guys, don't need to bother about what I'm saying. In case you don't have any publication yet, in case you've not made any article public, in case you've not published any article or any research work, you don't need to bother about that. What you need to do is just select any article publication that you can see here or any group that you can see here. Then you can go over to the next step. Then later on, you can actually delete the article since the article you selected is not yours. Yet, we are actually selecting this article that doesn't belong to us because we have not made any publication yet. We are just selecting the article just to create our account. After we are done creating our account, we will have to delete the article because this article does not belong to us. So guys, I hope you get what I'm saying. So you just select an article or select a group. Then after you are done creating your account, I will show you guys how you can delete it since the article or the group does not belong to us. So guys, now let me go ahead now to choose a group. You can see the groups is selected. So let me just choose one of these. So guys, now let me choose one of this group here, um, which am I going to take now? Let me go for the first one, let me tap on it. So guys, now you can now see that immediately I choose one of this group, the next icon now became clickable. If you don't choose any group here or any article, this next icon will not be clickable. You will not go over to the next step. So guys, now let me untick this group that I chose to show you guys what I mean. So guys, now you can see that the next icon now is unclickable. You can't click on it, but if I select it back, you're going to see that it's now clickable. So guys, now you can see I've selected a group, so let me select an article now. You can decide to select a group or an article, whichever one you select is going to work out well. So guys, let me select this and let me select whichever that one, let me just select this. So guys, now you can see I've selected a group and also I selected articles. So what I have to do now is to tap on next, you can see where the arrow is pointing at, so let me tap on it. So guys, now you can see this is the next step. Under here, we have three sections. The first one is article updates. Scholar automatically finds you new articles and changes the existing articles. So guys, now what you have to do now is to choose between those two options right there. The first option is apply updates automatically. The second one is email me updates for review. So guys, now let me choose the second option because sometimes the update is not actually done automatically. So I want it to be emailed to me for review. So guys, now let's go back to the next one. You can see what is written there. Profile visibility. Public profiles help your peers find and follow your work. So guys, now you can see the option there, make my profile public. So guys, now you can see make my profile public is actually chosen. But I'm going to untick it. I don't want my profile to be public yet. I still have some settings that I need to do in order to make my account look good. So guys, now let me uncheck it. I'm still going to show you guys how you can actually make your profile public as we go on in this video. So make sure you follow me to the end of this video. So guys, once you're done choosing all of these settings, what you have to do now is to tap on done. So guys, let me tap on done right there. You can see where the arrow is pointing at. So let me tap on it. Wow, guys, can I see we successfully created our Google Scholar account? You can see this is our Google Scholar account. You can see the group and articles that I selected. You can see uh, my area of concentration, my area of field. You can see everything right here. So, guys, now let me show you guys how you can actually set up your account the right way. So guys, now the first step to take now towards setting up your Google Scholar account the right way is to upload your profile image. And for you to do that, you have to tap on that place, the arrow is pointing. You can see that camera icon there. So guys, once you tap on it, it's going to direct you to your phone gallery where you have to select the image that you want to use as your profile image. So guys, now let me go back to the next thing. You can see that pencil icon there or the edit icon. You can use that pencil icon to edit all your information, all your profile information. So guys, let me tap on it so I show you guys. Let me tap on it right away. So guys, now you can see you can edit your name, you can also add another name, you can edit your affiliation, you can edit your areas of interest, you can edit your email as well, and also you can edit your homepage or your website. So guys, now you can see down there, you can actually make your profile public from there, you can see what is written there profile visibility make your profile public so guys now if you want to make your profile public what you have to do now is to tick that box right there once you tick that box there once you mark the box and tap on save your profile will be made public right away so guys let me cancel out of this now so guys let me show you guys what you can do next so guys now let me show you guys how you can actually delete those articles and those groups that you actually selected for you to be able to actually create this your google scholar account you have to delete them because those publications are not yours i'm also going to be showing you guys how you can add your publication in case you make your publication in the future i believe of course you can make yours in the future so guys now let me show you guys how i can delete those articles so guys now if you want to delete those articles that you've selected you can see what you have to do now is to tick that box right there you can see those box there let me tick the first one you can see where the arrow is pointing at let me tick it so guys now you can see it has been selected so what you have to do now is to tap on that delete icon there you can see where the arrow is pointing at let me delete it let me tap on it 
so guys now you can see move to trash you can see moved article to trash so guys now you can see it has been deleted so guys let me delete another one let me delete these two let me delete this first two um let me tap on delete so guys now you can see move two articles to trash so guys now you can see we have deleted two articles right away so guys now in case you want to add your own article your own publication that you got yourself involved with what you have to do now is to tap on that upload icon or that plus icon there you can see where the arrow is pointing at let me tap on it so guys now you can see there are actually four ways that you can upload or add your article or your publication you can see the first one there add article groups the second option is add articles the third one is add article manually the fourth one is configure article update so guys now let me just tap on the second option to show you guys how you can actually upload your publication let me tap on it so guys now you can see this way you can actually add or upload your publication you can actually search out the title or the topic of your publication right here and then add it to this platform and add it to this google scholar platform so guys for you to actually search out your publication what you have to do now is to tap on that search box there you can see there let me erase my name you can search the title of your work you can search for the title of your publication you can just type in the title of your publication then you tap on search so guys, let me type it in let me type um the title of your publication then once you type it in then you tap on that search icon there on the right hand side so let me type on it let me tap on it so guys now you can see it has searched out the publication this is how you can actually search out your own publication so guys once you search it out then you choose it then you select it let me select it so guys now you can see i've selected it then once you select it by marking that box there by checking that box then you tap on the icon there at the top you can see that good icon the arrow is pointing at it so guys now you can see added article to your profile so guys now you can see the article has been added to our profile you can see there at the top simulation of laboratory hydrate loop using the appens hysis so guys now you can see this is how you can actually add your own publication so guys let me go back to the next thing now so guys now let me show you guys how you can be able to find your mail the mails that are being sent to you to your account to your google scholar account so guys now for you to find your emails what you have to do now is to tap on that email box there that message box there you can see the arrow is pointing at it so let me tap on it so guys this way you're going to find all the mails that has been sent to you you can see what is written here your profile is currently private you receive email when your article are cited it needs to be public so guys now you can see for you to be able to receive your email you have to make your account public and i've showed you guys how you can actually make it public you can also make it public by tapping on this place here where it is written make it public so guys let me tap on it now to make it public so guys now you can see your profile is now public you can see it down there being encycled so guys now the next step you have to take now is to verify your email but you don't need to bother about that because you actually just want to create an account and use the google scholar to do your work that you want to do so just leave it that way but in case you want to verify your email what you have to do is to tap on where it is written verify you can see that at the top you can see where it is written verify email just tap verify you'll be able to verify your email but if you know that the email address that you added is wrong you don't need to go ahead to verify it the email that i added there is actually wrong the one i use in creating this account is a wrong email address it doesn't exist i just added it here to show you guys that you can actually create your google scholar account so guys in case the one you are going to impute is going to be wrong don't bother about verifying it and also if you left the email section blank if you didn't add an email you don't need to bother about verify your email remember i showed you guys how you can actually add an email here remember i showed you guys by tapping on that pencil icon that you can be able to add your email that's if you have gotten the right email you can go ahead to add the right email here and verify your email so guys now i've been able now to show you guys how you can create your google scholar account and how you can go about setting up your account the right way so guys now i've come to the end of this video and i believe you got value from this if you did make sure you like subscribe and leave a comment and also if you're new to our youtube channel don't forget to hit the bell notification so that whenever i release a new video like this you're gonna get notified see you on our next upload bye bye peace